Now I've wondered something for a little while, what is the difference between a £32,000 premium car versus a £121,000 high-end luxury car? So why is there an almost £100,000 price difference between these two, where you could literally buy three of this car for this car? Is it worth all that extra money? Well, watch all the way to the end of the video to find out more. But first, some context, and more specifically, as there is an EQS here, I wanted to touch on the S-Class name in Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz have been making cars for years. In fact, they were one of the first to actually make one all the way back in 1888. Carl Benz had produced a carriage that could maneuver without a horse, which his wife, Bertha Benz, took on the world's first road trip, which was just under 50 miles. And since that date, there have been many variations of models from the classic SL to the first C-Class, and then there's the S-Class, that launched over 50 years ago today. It was introduced in a model called the W116 line, and first used the S-Class name, and was deemed their flagship model. And funnily enough, in German, it's Sonderklasse, if I've pronounced that correctly. For us Brits, it's Special Class, as in their best model, also known as their flagship. Fast forward to today, you can still buy an S-Class, which is loaded with tech, link in the pop-up banner above, but this is where the Mercedes EQ range comes in. Mercedes EQ, of course, being all electric. This is an EQS, which has the best of everything. So apart from the obvious with a petrol engine versus an electric car, which of course does have its own price differences, the EQS has one of the best ranges in the world for electric. It's one of the most comfortable. It's also one with the most gadgets, and technology making the iCast, well, kind of look like it's missing out. But this is it. This is why there's a price difference of over £100,000. So let's check out some of the more hidden things that add up to this amount. Now guys, starting on the exterior first. Now, I don't need to state the obvious that the EQS is, of course, the larger of the two. That's kind of obvious. But what I wanted to bring your attention to was its aerodynamic approach. So this actually kind of stems from the kind of concept car that Mercedes-Benz brought out uh, years and years ago before this went into production. Basically, if you look at the side profile of the car, look at this silver strip here. This is what Mercedes-Benz called a one bow design. And the reason why it plays a significant part of this car it's because it's extremely sleek and very, very aerodynamic, meaning it cuts through the air like butter. It's actually got one of the lowest coefficient drag factors of any production car in the world, which translated to basically means you have one of the best ranges of any electric car in the world. It's up there. It's over 450 miles, which actually means it could probably go further than that and that's using fuel, so that says something. And this is definitely one of the factors, you know, it has such a high price tag over, say, like an entry-level A-Class, it can do it can do just that, basically. You know, it can go so far on one range. Now, of course, there are other things, which is, of course, relating to the tech, which I'll run through in a minute, but I just wanted to bring our attention to that, because that plays a huge part of the EQS. Now guys, just before we jump on to the interior of the car where you can see all of the tech, which is definitely my favorite part, just wanted to cover the boot really quickly. Again, fairly obvious that the EQS is gonna have the larger boot. This is 620 liters versus the A-Class's 350 liters. So huge boot here. I will add this little box here goes like all the way down. You almost lose your arm going in there because there's so much space in that little box there. And there's uh, space under here as well. So loads of ample space there you could put the charging cable under there or something so now what i want to do is jump into the rear of the car which is where you start to see some of these differences between these two cars and most importantly the thing that's at the front which i will share with you just after that now guys when it comes to the rear seats this is where you can start to see some of that high-end luxury stuff come out so number one first and foremost legroom look how much legroom there is it's crazy that is set up for my driving position i'm six foot two so i could literally sit there and you know drive and then this is how much legroom i've got here i can literally stretch my legs out it's mad 
Compare that with the A-Class, of course, it is going to be a lot less because it is the entry-level car. But these are the sorts of things that you can get in such a high-end luxury car. Uh, and that's just the start. So when you get onto things like climate control, this is no ordinary climate control. You can get quad zone climate control in this car. So that is separate temperatures, fan speed and positioning for each passenger. So you've got uh, passenger, front, the rear passengers as well. They all have their own climate control here, vents there. There's vents in the B pillars as well. It's, it's crazy the amount of stuff. And then in here, there's a couple of USB-C ports as well for, uh, for good measure. Um, and that's also, again, just the start. You've got things, again, specification does vary around the world, but, and this doesn't have everything, but there's heated seats or climate control ventilated seats. Uh, some cars even have massage seats as well. And in here, on certain specifications, you can also get an MBUX rear tablet, which allows you to control like sunroof blinds, I said massage seats, you can control all from this tablet. Everything that I've just mentioned there, you cannot get on an A-Class, which is, obviously saying something, that's just the high-end luxury you can get on this car. Oh, and the final thing, these pillows. Also, you can't get on an A-Class, but they're just so soft and so nice. I think I'll just stay here, to be honest. They're just, I want them in my car, even though I don't have an S-Class or an EQS, but they're just, they're just great. I love them. Anyway, that would be a very boring video if I just stayed here, just relaxing in the back. What I want to show you now is this showstopper at the front which is called the MBUX hyperscreen and you can't miss it because it's just over 55 inches yes guys this is the MBUX hyperscreen now it's it's absolutely massive it's it just goes across the entire dashboard I'd love to meet the person who thought you know everyone seems to be making these screens at the moment let's just put this massive thing well technically speaking it's three screens you've got a uh, one for a passenger there so when someone's sat there they can do their own things there and watch movies and things like that uh, then you've got the center screen which is of course big in itself uh, that does all the usual things in the car like um, sat nav and phone and radio and media content and that sort of thing then you've got this one here as well so literally three digital screens that just go across i would like to add it is an eight thousand pound option uh, for this for the mbox hyper screen so um yeah <laughs> it's it's definitely up there although i will add there are some um models in the eqs range that have it as standard i gotta say it does look incredible and this is one of the reasons you know you look at a high-end luxury car you're gonna get the best i have not ever seen anything like this apart from maybe in like um concept cars and that sort of thing i have not seen anything like this that you know is literally just that futuristic uh, it just looks incredible now, of course, it's running Mercedes-Benz's latest MBUX multimedia system. Now, I have covered this uh, quite a few times before, and I have covered this on the review, so if you do want to check that out, click on the pop-up banner up above. But yes, that is one of the main reasons in this car that just it just looks amazing. You don't have to have the hyper screen. You can go for the standard screen that looks a bit like this here, uh, but I just it, it's just incredible. I'm speechless, as you guys can tell. <laughs> so... There's some hidden things in uh, suddenly a high and luxury car that make it, you know, that much more. Uh, not the hyper screen, but I'm going to cover those now. So, you know, as I mentioned at the start, this car is quite long. This does have a thing called rear wheel steering. So basically the wheels can turn in opposite directions when you're at slow speeds to help reduce that turning circle. And it's quite impressive actually, because you know, it's such a long car that will help if you're trying to do a turn in the road or navigating around car parks and that sort of thing. However, when you're traveling at higher speeds, uh, so like on a dual carriageway or motorway or something, they will turn the same direction just to help keep the car balanced and that sort of thing and improve its handling as well so as again this is a high-end luxury car you will also get air suspension as well so this is where the car can raise up and down depending on um, your preferences in the car you know if you're going over any bumpy roads or anything but the car will naturally level itself as well so um, you just it's just even more comfortable than like some comfort springs you're just riding on a cushion of air and this, you know, is again all about that luxury lifestyle. Another thing with this car as well is a thing called Park Assist. Now, quite a lot of cars have Park Assist these days. I have done a separate video on that, so click on the pop-up banner up above if you want to see that one. However, this one will have a thing called Memory Park Assist. Now, I did do this in an S-Class before, 
Uh, funnily enough, I actually recorded this here at Mercedes-Benz Pool. So I literally started from over there and I managed to program into the car. It drove me round, hands-free, all the way round here, round to the other side of the building. And I didn't touch a thing. I was just here observing it. So if you want to see that, click on the pop-up banner up above to see that uh, Park Assist video because that is uh, that was great fun, definitely. Another thing is the array of driving assistance features you can get on such a high-end luxury car. This will be known as the driving assistance package, but we're talking like your radar, cruise control, among many other things. All you've got to do is look at the brochure and you can see all these different things listed in here that this car does. I would love to get my hands on a car like this to take out on the road and redo the driving assistance package. For now, I have covered the driving assistance package before, so click on the pop-up banner up above if you want to see that one, but I would love to re kind of make that video again and just see what more this car has to offer as I know it can do a lot more than what the previous one did. Now the AMG version can do 658 horsepower which if I remember was 0-60 of 3.2 seconds which that is really impressive for such a weighty car. So don't forget this we'll see this is electric so it's going to be quite um quite heavy when it comes to holding that massive battery. It's going to be I think it's about 107.8 kilowatt hour battery or, or around that area anyway. Uh, so that's going to be obviously quite heavy but the fact it can do 0 to 60 uh, this is of course the 162,000 pound version um in 3.2 seconds that's um that's saying something. So uh, that I would love to test. So <laughs> hopefully I might get my hands on one in the future to, uh, to try that out. Oh, and one last thing as well. Of course, all about that luxury, you'll actually find this car is so well acoustically kind of treated, you can barely hear any noise on the outside. Now, granted at the moment, I do have this door open just to have my camera here. So you might hear a bit of noise and birds and things like that and bikes driving by on the road behind me. But certainly when the windows are down, you can actually see they're double glazed. So you've got double glazed windows just to enhance and soundproof everything on the inside. It's all about that luxury on the inside. I said even the seats and everything's just so super soft. There's all these squidgy materials everywhere. Um, you will very rarely find any plastics in, in a car like this for sure. And of course there's ample room everywhere for loads of cups and storage. There's even storage under here as well. So just everything is, you know, a premium car times 10. Everything is just super enhanced that you you just don't get on, you know, something like 30, 32,000 pounds and that sort of thing. But I know what I want on uh, my Christmas list, but <laughs> I don't think that's going to be fulfilled. But yeah, that is kind of a few differences on a high-end luxury car versus a premium car, certainly in Mercedes-Benz. Now guys, of course, those are the few differences you can get between an A-Class and say like an EQS. However, Mercedes-Benz do loads of other models. If you want to see all the ones I've reviewed, check this playlist out here. Once you click on it, scroll all the way down, you can see all the different models that I have personally reviewed at Mercedes-Benz. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out as always to Sandown Mercedes as they help provide access to all these awesome cars you see in the videos. Until next week, see you then.